And now let us say hello to the man who will be headlining the UFC event on August 29th in Las Vegas. He's a former UFC light heavyweight title contender, Lionheart himself, Anthony Smith, who goes up against Alexander Rakic in a very interesting three-round main event. Uh, this, this wasn't supposed to be the original main event. Uh, Zabit Magomed Charipov versus Yair Rodriguez was the original main event. Yair gets hurt, so they call upon old faithful Anthony Smith to uh, headline another card. And I'll, I'll start there, Anthony, if I can, because I remember when this fight was first put together, you were like, you know what? Uh, maybe it'll be nice to have, you know, a non-main uh, event, a three-round fight. Well, here you are in a three-round fight, but you're the main event once again. So how did you feel when you got that call? Uh, I felt good. You know, I, everything was going really, really good for this training camp. Um, I don't want to be cliche and say it's the best training camp of my life, but I mean, it's the truth. Like things are just going good. I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Everything's just really coming together. Um, and they called the the day of the way. I was actually in Vegas uh, when they called. I was working the, uh, God, man, uh, Derek Lewis and Olenek fight. I was working the the desk for that one. Uh, and that's about the time the Yair fell off. And uh, they just asked if I'd be willing to do the main event. And I said that I, I was definitely open to the conversation. Uh, and you know, here we are. You get a little bump when they bump you up to the main event. Well, that's why it's three rounds. <laughs> well, a bump in pay. Yeah. That's why it's three rounds. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it, listen, I don't, I think people are under the impression that fighters that train for three rounds versus five rounds at their training camps look totally different. Not necessarily the case, like at least not for my camp. So we, it wouldn't matter if we're doing five or three, like I'm going to get in the best shape I possibly can leading into this fight it's not like we get to a point where like oh, okay we're only fighting three rounds we're probably good here like it doesn't really work like that um but tactically that changes everything uh how we approach it what the first round looks like what the second round looks like you know i'm not fighting this guy like i fought alexander gustafson when i didn't even care if i won or not and i just went in and threw bombs and see what would happen uh there's you know the, alexander brings some some interesting problems to the table and, and we have to adjust to that depending on how many rounds it is um and i just wasn't you know, and, and it wasn't like there was an argument. It was like, hey, uh, if you want five rounds, like on two weeks notice, like we got to do something here. And they were like, well, you know, the way things are working, I was like, well, I'll fight, I'll fight three for sure. So okay. I don't have to change anything. And they said, so you're willing to do a three round main event? And I was like, yeah, for sure. You know, okay. they wanted to go, they went to Alex, he was good with it. And here we are. So in, in other words, it's three rounds, it's main event, but it's for the same amount. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Obviously, the last time we saw you, that was a much talked about uh, fight and there was all the stuff that happened surrounding it. Uh, just curious, how long did it take for you to actually heal up from, you know, the busted orbital, the teeth, all that? So how long did that take? Uh, it was pretty fast. Uh, I tried to get cleared. I tried to get cleared like a month later uh, to get my suspension uh, lifted from Cal uh, from Florida. And they were having some issues and I had to go back through all this different testing. And, and so it took about like an additional two weeks, but I was, I would have been good to like a month. Okay. Um, and did you want to come back sooner or did you want to come back later? And they called you with this or was this the perfect time for you to come back? Because I will admit when I first found out about you coming back in August, I was like, all right, that's three months. Those injuries seem significant, maybe a little time off. Uh, so I thought you would come back maybe in the fall, you know, October or so. What did you think of August 29th when it was a man? I would have fought. Or I would have fought sooner. I really, really would if they would have let me. Um, and I and again, I, I like I know the UFC does get a bad rap on a lot of things, and and maybe some of them are warranted, and maybe some of them aren't. You know, but um, they they weren't really having it. Like I wanted to get back sooner, and I really wanted to fight on Fight Island, oh. and they just they're you know they're like, hey, you just had a tough fight. You know, let yourself heal, uh, and we'll have something coming down the pipe for you. So I don't oh. know if they had this in mind before. And they just wanted to, you know, they had a time that they wanted it to be and, and it was now. But uh, yeah, I tried to fight on Fight Island. Wow. Uh, back in July, not the one in September. They're going in September. July. You're talking about July. last month. Yeah, I wanted to fight in July. That's amazing. You just you just felt like you wanted to get back in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, we've talked about this before. I do really well when I'm running out there a lot. Like on the flip side of that, I spend a lot of time, you know, especially to you, like, man, we're going again. Like we do like, uh, you know, we'll talk after the fight. And then like two days later, we got to talk again. Cause I got another one booked, you know? Yes. So like I do kind of complain about it, but I perform better when I'm, when that's happening. And I, and maybe that's part of the way that I came up uh, in the re on the regional scene. It was constantly having to fight as often as I could, some of it financial and some of it just trying to get a shot. 
and, and I took every opportunity in front of me. So maybe that's just kind of how I'm wired that I just want to keep fighting. And I just tend to do better that way when I'm not out of camp for a long time. Cause I always train like in between fights, but it's not like a hard training camp. Right. So, uh, that's why I want, I just want to keep the ball rolling. Like, even though it wasn't a great, a, a great performance, I had, I had some wind in my sails still. Like I, I like, all right, I'm already in this training camp mode. Let's just keep it rolling and let's fix these problems. Have you watched the fight against Glover? Uh, no, not beginning to end. Any particular reason why? Uh, no, no. I mean, my coaches pulled, we pulled up some like clips and things that like some things that I did well and some things that, we needed to fix, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of just good with it. Like, mm. uh, like the John fight keeps me up at night. The Tiago Santos keeps me up at night. Still. You know, yeah. Still. Wow. Still, but like Glover, I mean, like we're kind of good, you know, like I'm good with it. Like the first two rounds, like there's, there were some things to take from that positive. Um, I, essentially I did whatever I wanted when I wanted to. Um, I, I think that those two rounds are the, you know, the, the if, if you look at us from the outside, like that's where Glover and I are skill set wise. Like I'm just that much better than he is. Hmm. I did come out a little hot. You know, I doubled my output, you know, per round. I, the highest output I've ever had in my whole career, I doubled it in the first and the second round. So, you know, I think that I'd been off for so long and I wanted to make a, I, I think I wanted to make a stamp, you know, I wanted to put a stamp on it and, and, you know, I just, I didn't have any momentum and there's no crowd to like feed off of. And it was just different. So I just came out super hot and even, even the, the warm up was kind of, was just different. Uh, it just felt different. So, you know, as I go into the first two rounds, I'm kind of doing whatever the hell I wanted to do, which amped me up even more. Cause I'm like, all right, I'm going to get a finish. And you know, what, what did Mike Tyson say, or, or Teddy Alice, one of those guys said, if, if you chase the finish, you're never going to win a decision. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that's kind of what I did, you know, and, and then in the third round, he hit me with the uppercut and I was, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't track his punches from my right side. And I mean, what do you do? Like you're fighting a guy like Glover Teixeira, you know, like half blind. Uh, and then your teeth are broken off in your mouth and it, you're tired. And like, I did everything I could with what I had in that fight. So like, like I was heartbroken about it. Like, and it still sucks, but like my pride is intact and, and, Glover's a good dude. Like he, you're going to lose to someone. Like if I was going to lose that night, I'm glad it was to someone like Glover. Like I can't, I don't think I can ever, I've ever been able to say honestly before, like I'm happy for his success. Mm. So like, it sucks that, <laughs> that I lost. Like that really sucks. But like, what a good dude though. You know, like, it, like he deserves it. So, you know, he beat me fair and square that night and, and I'm happy for his success. By the way, did you put in new teeth? Yeah. Look at that. I mean, your teeth are fun. I don't know who has better teeth. You or Darren Till, dude. So I've always wondered about Darren Till's teeth. Yes, and and I and I always wanted to ask him. I just hadn't run into him yet. Yeah, and then I seen you talking to him, and he finally because <laughs> he never talked about it before. Right. I was like, "There's no way that guy has perfect teeth like that, and they're not and they're not veneers." And then it was cool though that he didn't like some people that get veneers. They like pretend like, "No, this is my yeah. real teeth, and I was just born like this." Like, no, 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 no. you're lying. No yeah. way they're that perfect. Darren isn't exactly bashful. I don't think that he's the kind. <laughs> no. Who, who no. has better teeth, you or him, in your opinion? Um, Probably Darren. I would say Darren because I still uh, I haven't had enough time to get the – I have the gaps right here from where I've had uh, teeth broken off before in fights. So I had to have them pulled, and then um, you have to wait for those spots to heal, and then they put the implants in. Oh. So it's, the implants are, like, really gnarly, though. They drill these, like, things into your jaw. And you have to wait for that to heal. And then they put a post in there and then they put the tooth on it. Oh, so no. Darren's are, are full all the way back. And so I have a couple of gaps that, that we still have to fill. So you will do that now, eventually. For yeah. Now. Yeah. But for now, Darren's are, are, are better. Um, one of the, one of the big time, the major talking point after was the interaction with your coaches and then not the stopping the fight and all that stuff. Just curious, not going to harp too much on it, but has your stance changed? I feel like it hasn't, but you still feel the same way as, when we spoke about it a few days later, right? You don't regret them not stopping or the, the relationship you have with your coaches or the agreement that you have that they can't stop a fight. Your stance on that hasn't changed, correct? No, no, I'm still good with it. Um, and, and we really haven't talked about it that much, you know, like it's not one of those things that, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but it's not like I had this meeting and sat them down and mm. said, there, here's the deal. Like, here's the rules, blah, blah, blah. Like, it wasn't like that. And then I think that people think, 
when I say that, that I had like, I, I, I called a meeting and, and made them sign a contract and you know what I mean? It's not that serious. It's more, you're watching a fight and it's going really bad or, or someone does throw in the towel or whatever. And then, you know, like you make those half jokingly, half not joking, like you guys ever did that shit, I'll fire you, you know? And, and then you, you, you talk about it a little bit and then it just goes on. So we really haven't talked about it much. Like I, I, I still don't feel like the fight was in a spot that it needed to be stopped. It, it depends on where your argument is. Like, is your argument when a fighter can't win anymore? Because that seems to be Chael's kind of argument. Like once a fighter can no longer win, uh, Chael thinks that you should stop the fight. I, 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 I will argue that one for sure. Cause I think that there's a lot to be learned there. And like, listen, after the third round, maybe it was the fourth round, might've been the fourth. Um, I remember like standing up from the stool and like just blood pouring out of every hole in my face, like thinking, man, I probably can't do it this time. You know, like I've got pulled out, I pulled off a lot of crazy wins and, and pulled my ass out of some crazy stuff. But I just know, I, like in that moment, I was like, ah, I just don't think I can do it this time. But it, that doesn't mean that you quit, right? Like that's, that's kind of my mentality. I always tell people that it's not, to me, it's, it's not about, the whole thing isn't about the result. It's more about the, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey there. So I'm, I'm more worried about the things that happened between the first bell and the last bell. And I'm less concerned with the things that happened after the last bell. So even though I knew like, I'm going to do the best I can, but I probably can't pull it out this time. There, there's still a lot to be learned there. Like there's a, there's a lot that's going to happen in that journey. And you only find out who you really are as a person when it's staring you right in the face, it's kind of like when the dude broke in my house, like, are you a fight or a flight kind of guy? There's only one way to figure that out. And, and that's in the moment when the dude busts through the door and you either run away or you face the problem head on. And, and fortunately I was the, the fight guy, but you never know what's going to happen in a fight when it's the fan and things are going absolutely terrible and your teeth are falling out of your mouth and you can't see out of your right eye and your nose is broken. So you can't breathe out of it and you're exhausted you don't actually know how you're going to react until that happens. So like, that was the moment when I, when I knew like, all right, like I'm that guy, like I can keep going, even though I know that there's no light at the end of this tunnel. And then that's important to me. Like, I think I took, I took a lot from that and had they thrown in the towel, I, I wouldn't have had that experience. I'm assuming you have the same corner for this fight. No, no. What's different? Um, there's no James Kraus this time. Well, they just, they just, uh, and it's only because they just gave me the fourth corner because I'm the main event now. So it was going to be my typical three round corner that I had before, uh, was Mark Montoya, Scott Morton and Danny Molina. Uh, and honestly, this time I just slid in my best friend. Okay. Cause he's so, there with me. Well, so I always, I always travel. I always fly out my best friend. So he takes a week off of work. I cover his salary. And, and honestly, he just hangs out with me all week. Like it's, that's how we've been doing it for years. But with this whole COVID thing, he wasn't going to be able to come because unless you're a fighter or a corner, you can't be in the, in the hotel. So he wasn't going to be able to come, which was kind of a weird deal for me. So um, they gave me the fourth corner like last second. So I just put him in the corner, which he's been in my corner before. Like we kind of started our careers together. So he had to sit back kind of like a fly on the wall, but he'll be able to play Madden with me all week in the hotel. So that's cool. So this has nothing to do with what happened in May? No, no, okay. not at all. Um, and as far as the beginning of this camp starting, did you guys have like a talk about all this, you know, because I think that some of your coaches felt a little bit like people were disrespectful towards them or criticizing them. Did you guys clear the air? Was that needed or no? No, you know, I kind of, I, I flipped them a bunch of crap, you know, like I still give James Krause crap about it, you know, cause it, and, and even Mark, you know, I, they're just, those guys care a lot. They really do. They care about their team. They care about their fighters. Uh, and I've built great relationships with them both. So when people, whether it's the media or fans, the people trash them and, and, and just make them seem like they're the worst people in the world, it doesn't hurt their feelings because of what they're saying. It's because like they're insinuating that those guys don't care about me. So I gave them a lot of crap and made fun of them. Like, Hey, what are you going to cry over Twitter? Like you guys over it yet? <laughs> like, cause it didn't, it doesn't bother me. I'm kind of, mm -hmm. but maybe it's cause I'm used to it. Like us as fighters, we get the, we get the, we get both sides of it every single time we fight. If you lose, you're the worst guy in the world. If you win, you're the next title challenger, you know? So it's it, fans are fickle and, and, and I get it as a media media member now, like you got to kind of grab onto headlines and stuff. It's, it's understandable. So, but those guys as coaches, they're only used to getting praise for the good stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's not often that 
a fighter loses and they trash the corner. So this is a, a totally new thing for them. So uh, we didn't really talk about it, to be honest. It's just, we just move on. You know, we fix the problems. We, we do it the best we can to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, and I think we've done that. Not trying to give you any excuses, but that was a crazy time in everyone's life, right? When you fought, um, COVID was, you know, very much new. Uh, you went from potentially headlining in your home state, right? And then the date getting pushed around all over the place to then going to Florida. And then of course the break-in that we talked about, uh, in hindsight, like, were, did you feel like you were, you were all there or was there just a lot going on? How much can you attribute all that stuff going on to what we saw in the cage? See, like, I, I would like to like be honest about it, but it's always going to sound like I'm making an excuse, you know? And, and no, I don't, no, I, you're and, I don't being. Take, and I don't want to take anything away from Glover. That's what, yeah. that's what I don't want to do. Like he earned that and, and it was tough. I didn't make it easy on him. So it, it wasn't the best training camp I've ever had. That's for sure. Um, I felt like it was though in the moment, but I, I think that that's what we do as fighters. You know, there was, you know, it was like just one thing after another, after another, it was just, I was banged up and, and, you know, I just fought through it all. And, and, but in my head, I was like, you know, I didn't come this far to only come this far. Like it, it, it I don't know. It's like, you're just trudging through all the, you just like, at some point, like people are like, Hey man, maybe we should turn around. And then like, in my head, it's just like, you just got to keep going forward. Like there's no failure, you know, like you have to keep going. And, you know, the, the, the big part was not being able to train in Denver. That At the time, I thought that, like, we were doing a good enough job uh, at home. But it's just different here. It's the, the training part, the level of the training partners, it's not even so much the coaching. It's the level of the training partners that are pushing you. It's the, you know, the altitude is, is one thing, the, the, the structure that's here. It's, you know, kind of at home, like, I, I've just done so well here in Denver. And I think part of it is, and I don't want to blame it on my kids and my family, but it's like, like, are you really re like when I'm here, I'm just a fighter. You mm -hmm. know, I, I go to practice, I go eat some food, get ready for the next one. And I just, it just repeats. It's just rinse, wash and repeat over and over and over. When I'm at home, it's like, all right, I got to mow the grass. Got to take the dog out. I'm like, Oh yeah, I got to go to practice. And you run to practice, you come back, you run the kids here. You're like, it's just a lot. So I don't, I don't think that that was like a reason, but it's definitely a factor in everything being different for sure. And, the, and then the break in, I couldn't, there's no way I could leave them after that. Um, so there's that, but without making excuses, it, it, it wasn't the best training camp I ever had. That's for sure. How is your family doing post break? I saw you guys got a dog. That was a cool video that you posted. Yeah. Uh, so you got some backup, but do you feel like the kid, you know, it's very traumatic for children, very traumatic for you, for your wife, for everyone, right? Your mother-in-law, I believe was there as well. Yeah. Uh, how are they doing? Um, me, I'm like, I'm good. You know, I was, I think I was pretty, I was only just worried about them. Like I, I wasn't too, I wasn't too shook up about it. It was, it was the family, but the kids like, they, it's, it's not that much better if I'm being honest. They still wake up in the middle of the night and want me to check the doors and, and they're having bad dreams. And, and like, it goes away for a little while. Like we'll go a couple of weeks and none of them, neither, none of them will say anything about it. And then out of nowhere, you know, they'll, something will remind them of it or, or whatever, you know? So I, like, I went to that guy's court date, uh, and, uh well, last week sometime and on Friday, on Friday. So like, I think that kind of brought it up because then they started talking about it a lot, which I get it. You know, I like it's, it, it's not as bad as it was, but it's not perfect for sure. You saw him. I did. What was that like? Uh, he was shocked to see me for sure. Uh, but he was kind of being like a little, a little, you know, like he was sitting there with his, he had his mom, his dad, his brother and his lawyer. And he's like, dressed up in this like super nice button up and these checkered dress pants. And like, you know, I kind of watched him from the outside a little bit before I walked in and, uh, and I don't even care if he listens to this. I was being super creep. So I was just watching him and, you know, they're like chit chatting back and forth. Like, doesn't look like he's that upset to be there. And, and then I walked in and they both, they all sat there with their heads down and their hands between their legs. Like, I don't think they were expecting to see me. Wow. And what was he there for? Uh, just to get a slap on the wrist. Okay. They ended up extending his court date, but he, he got a misdemeanor trespassing and a disturbing the peace ticket. Like it's, okay. it's total, it's, it's a disaster. Um, the other big one, you know, the Max Roshkoff situation, we got some finality to that. He got released. Yeah. Were, were you surprised he got released? No, no. And I don't think he probably was either. You know, we talked, I, I interviewed him on my show yeah. and it was actually a really good interview. I was actually really happy that he, that he opened up. I think people actually got like a real view into, into who he is and kind of what his mindset was. 
but I don't think that he was shocked. Um, I think he was expecting to have to go to the regional scene and, and, and prove himself. And he seemed willing to do that when I talked to him that he knew that he had to prove himself. And, you know, I think he just got caught up, you know, like what he took the fight on like five days or six days notice or something like that. Um, probably never been in any kind of adversity in his whole life. He's fighting in the middle of a pandemic with no crowd. He's not super experienced, you know, like I've been fighting in weird places my whole career, but like these younger guys, they've, they've, they've had really nice venues and super nice promotions. Like your, you know, your RFAs and, and LFA and, and even when legacy was a thing and like the, you know, the CFFCs, like these are nice promotions. Like those things weren't around when like I was coming up. So like, they're not used to like weird, funky venues and weird stuff. So um, I, I wasn't surprised that, that he kind of ended up in the situation that he did, but I, I hope that he goes on the regional scene and, and proves himself. You know, he's, he's, he's going to go one way or the other, either he's going to be, be going to be broken in a fight and then he's going to go and he's going to not going to want that feeling ever again. He's going to do everything he can to make sure it doesn't happen. He's going to push through the, the, the fire when it happens or it's going to be too much. He's not going to be able to handle it. Um, that, that's how I ended up the way that I was like, you know, you hear David Goggins talk about this all the time that he wasn't always so hard that he was a, a big fat guy that was lazy and sat around eating ice creams and, you know, cheeseburgers all day. And then he just calloused his mind. That's, that's kind of what I did. Like, Josh Neer broke me in my hometown the very first time we fought after I got cut from the UFC. He broke me with my mom in the front row. And from that moment on, like I knew that that would never happen again. And so like Max is going to go that way. He's either going to, that's going to be his mentality or, or he's going to be broken and it's not, it's going to be too much for him. Dying to ask you about John Jones. What is your reaction of uh, him vacating the title moving on? And, and now Jan and, and Dominic are going to fight for the vacant belt, but John leaving the division. Finally, a guy that you have been linked to. Are you happy about this or were you wishing that he would stick around? Well, first I, for the first time, maybe ever, and, and the whole time that I've been in a position to talk about John Jones, I actually we need to give him some credit. Um, he, he could have held on to that title and held the division up. And there have been, while he's going through whatever negotiations he's going through and then started talking about his heavyweight run and all that stuff and made them, because it was pretty clear that Dana and the UFC were not going to strip him. So, you know, for him to just make a decision that he was going to go up and then not want to continue because John is that kind of a guy like he wants what he wants and like that title's his and that's something that he he holds very dear to his heart like that is very much who John Jones is he's a champion and he needs that so for him to 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 vacate it and and just kind of let the division move on and then him do his thing you know like right now John Jones isn't a champion like that's that's kind of crazy right like no one beat him and he just gave it up and that says a lot about where John is kind of personally, like he's like, he's okay right now without being the champion of the world. And every time he's either, you know, he failed a drug test or got in some trouble and had to be stripped or whatever you could tell. in in even in the couple interviews you did with him and and you can tell that it just eats at him that he isn't the champion. And so maybe it's because it's on his terms and he vacated it, but either way um, I think it's a, a, a fairly noble thing to, to just give it up and then go about your business and work on your heavyweight run and let everyone else kind of keep moving forward personally. Um, I, I still believe that the Glover thing was a fluke and that that wouldn't happen if we fought nine more times. I think I went nine, out of, nine out of nine. So I'm still in a position where I like, I know that I can be the champion of the world and I don't want the DC thing to happen to happen to me. Like, I don't want to, you know, so say, say Reyes wins and then the winner of Glover and Tiago likely get that title shot, right? I would, I would imagine. Um, then they fight, and whether I fight again or I don't fight again, whatever, and I beat Rakic, then I beat the champion. Like, am I going to be the champion? Or is everyone going to say, yeah, you're the champion of the world, but, like, it's because John Jones just gave it up. Like, I don't want that DC thing to happen. And so that kind of sucks that I'll never get a, a shot at John Jones ever again, likely. Uh, so that that, that kind of sucks, but – it is good that the division's moving. I think Reyes deserves a title shot. I think Blahovich deserves a title shot. Uh, and the rest of us can keep working our way to it. How do you think he does at heavyweight? I mean, you know Stipe, right? You know him pretty mm-hmm. well. Stipe versus John, who wins? I don't know. It's a tough one. Um, I, I, it's always hard to like talk about John as if he's not a heavyweight because John is a heavyweight that sucks himself down to 205. Mm. He has a heavyweight frame. He really does. And he, it's... It, 
I've seen people talk about they don't know how John Jones is going to be able to carry the extra weight. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've seen John outside of camp. And, and I've seen John probably 240. You know what I mean? He gets the belly. And, you know, if he can put the weight on in a good way and, and keep his speed, I think he beats most of the heavyweights. Uh, mm-hmm. I think a couple of the guys at the top can give him problems. You know, that's, you know, your Francis and Ghanas, and that's just because Francis is such a freak. Um, but I think that – I think John beats Francis easier than he beats Stipe for, for sure. I think most people would agree with that as well. Yeah, just based on Stipe's boxing, right? His foot movement and right. his, 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 uh, his, his, his reach, his length. He, I mean, he's just a really good boxer, right? He right. Could probably goes toe well, to toe. You know, the one thing that I do, I do see a problem for Stipe is for as short as DC is, he's, he's DC had a fairly success, like a, a fairly easy time uh, getting to Stipe. Yeah. Uh, and that's just not how DC fought John. You know, he just always had a tough time getting to him. Uh, it's the same problem I had with John. I just couldn't get to him. And, you know, that's what makes John great. So I think that Stipe, if he would, if he, if he, if he, if he were to beat John Jones, he would have to figure out how he needs to be faster. He needs to be faster and, and he's, he's got to be more mobile. You know, he does move a lot already, but you know, the, the problem that everyone's going to have with John Jones is he just manages distance so well. Um, you know, I think with a guy like Francis, you know, John would have to be a little bit timid and, and stay away, stay away, and then fight Francis in the clinch because I think John gets to the clinch with Francis and Gano. He fairly he pretty much does what he wants. Um, mm-hmm. Not so much with Stipe. Stipe is a good enough wrestler. He can fight in the clinch. He's super strong. Um, he's just – Stipe is like a heavy guy. Even though he only weighs like 235 or 240 or heaviest, it's weird. Like, he's just so heavy. Like, everything he hits you with is just so hard. Um but John's good at staying away. You know, like I think John is, he immediately is a danger factor in that division. Would you agree with me that it's best for the 205 pound division if Dominic wins? Because it kind of reminds me a lot of the Johnny Hendricks, George St. Pierre situation back at UFC 167, where a lot of people, including myself, thought that Johnny Hendricks beat GSP. So even though GSP left the division, once Johnny was booked against Robbie Lawler and eventually won, it didn't feel like he was, you know, the paper champ or the secondary champ. It was like, all right, this guy kind of is the king without a crown. He deserved to win that fight in November of 2013, I believe it is. It's okay. We can live with this. And I sort of feel like the same thing will happen if Dominic wins. So a, do you agree with that? And B, are you rooting for Dominic to win? Is is it better for the division? If he wins in your opinion? Uh, I don't, I don't know if it's better for the division. It's definitely better for Dominic Reyes. Because if he, if he goes into and he goes in and he loses, uh, then it's always going to look like he just had the best night of his life. And John had that night for the division. You know, I never really thought about it like that. I don't know if it matters or not, but okay. Um, I'm not really rooting for for either guy. Uh, for whatever reason, I have a feeling that uh, that Jan can get it done. I just like that guy's style. He's just everything's so basic, and and he's he, he just does everything right there. You have to unplug that. Sorry. No, no, you're good. You can plug it. Sorry, Ariel. No problem. Um, like he 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 just does everything so perfectly. It's and he's not flashy. Like Dominic Reyes is a little bit flashy, and you know, he just looks the part and Jan's kind of unassuming, but he's really, really big. He's got big power in his hands. And and I don't know, it, it'd be nice to kind of see the guy that's kind of maybe winding down a little bit, getting close to the end of his career. He's, he's He kind of went under the radar for a long time. Uh, he's been doing this a long time. It'd be cool to see him kind of get a title and then whether he loses it right away or not, whatever, just be able to at least sail off in the sunset with a with a world championship. Well, it's a fascinating time at 205 with your fight coming up, the Glover, Tiago Santos fight coming up, obviously the title fight, John leaving. So it's a whole new era. First time in nine and a half years that someone not named John Jones or Daniel Cormier is going to hold the light heavyweight title. So that's kind of exciting and fresh for the division as well. And I like when all this stuff is happening at the same time. So l- let's end on this if I can. Um, Rakic to me is really good. And I thought he won his last fight against Volkan. So he should be on, I believe, a 13 fight winning streak if if he would have gone the nod. He'd lost via split decision. Are you impressed with him? A and B, what kind of guy do you expect to see based on what happened in the Volkan fight? Um am I impressed with yeah, yeah, I think I am. Uh you don't sound very impressed. Well, I, listen, it's it's kind of the same, same. Like anytime <laughs> someone, anytime someone like, like him comes up or it, it's like, he's super, all right. He, what are the things that people say about, about Alexander? He's really strong and he's explosive and he's athletic and he's big. Like, 
that's pretty much what he's used up to the point that he lost. Like Hmm. he beat everyone just by being an athlete. And he's, he obviously has some skills. His striking is good. I'll give him that. Um, But it's not, it doesn't wow me. He, he throws looping punches. He jumps into kicks. He, he just, he's just powerful and explosive. And, and versus people that, you know, like, like Justin let it, like, that's not super impressive. Like you can kind of just be an, like you can just be an athlete and be big and strong and powerful and know how to throw a punch and beat that guy. No, n- no disrespect. He's just not at the highest level. So then he runs into a guy like Vulcan, who's not afraid of him and, and who hits equally as hard and is powerful. And, and it backs him off a little bit. Like he's, he's kind of a bully and he wants to push forward and he just runs people over. And then he kind of ran into Vulcan and he couldn't, it, whether he won that fight or lost that fight, uh, Vulcan made him fight very differently from how he fought in the past. Uh, and I expect a lot of the same with me. It's, it's it'll be real. He'll be really, really tough in the first couple of minutes. And then when you force a guy like that to have to think and, and use his brain and set traps and, and kind of be tricky, he's not so tricky. You know, he's, hmm. he's, he's, he's very basic, super dangerous though. So, and that's, what's exciting for me. He's, he's very, very dangerous. He's, he's powerful and, and he believes in his power. Um, which, which, which is tough to deal with, but it could also be his downfall as well. Um, the guys that rely on that, you know, are kind of surprised when the guy's still there. Um, it, for as much as his cardio gets talked about, you know, like he was fairly tired in the third round of the Vulcan fight. Um, but I've also been in there with Vulcan and I know that that dude makes you tired. So I, it, I don't know if that's just that fight or, or if that's how it is, but I just, I, I see it being a, a pretty tough first round. And then, and then once we get him settled in, then I think that I can do whatever I want. I just think that I'm the more technical striker. He's the, he's the more powerful one. Um, he's the, you know, I'm the better, he, we're probably equal on wrestling, I would imagine, but I'm absolutely the better jujitsu guy. So he really only has one way to win the fight. Like he has to knock me out. And, you know, I think I've proven at this point that that's fairly hard to do. Um, and with the better, you know, I, I think he's looking at it from, you know, I got a, I, I got a little, I got a friend, you know, we have a mutual friend Oh, and, and you know, he's, he's got all of his, his gym people and his training partners and stuff hitting me up on Instagram, telling him, telling me that, you know, he's going to kill me. And oh, so it's, it's like, he's going to, like, he really thinks he's going to break me and make me quit. Uh, so like, it's kind of exciting to me because I fought two people in a row that I really like, like, I really, really, really like Glover and I really, really like and respect Gustafson. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to like go in there with like a little bit of a chip, you know, like kind of like, like this. this guy you know like I'm, I'm ready so it, I almost welcome it you know like it's it's super fun to go in there with guys like he reminds me of Hector Lombard a little mm-hmm. bit like Hector was kind of like blowing me off and he was gonna kill me he was gonna break me he didn't know who I was and I didn't deserve to be in there with him uh and then we've seen how that worked out like it's super tough at the beginning because that's just how they fight but as it goes on like you you figure them out and 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 it just it'd be fun to see him break after having the intention to break me. Like that's the fun part for me. So it's like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like I can't wait to talk trash to him in the middle of it. Like it's, <laughs> I'm super excited for this one. I haven't been like super giddy in a long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for this one. By the way, the mutual friend, is he giving you tips on what's going on at the gym? Nah, nah. Okay. I, just don't spe- I just don't speak or write the language. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> right. So I, I right. can't translate it. Right, right, right. So he, he translates, he translates it and, and lets me, and listen, he's a young guy. He believes he won his last fight. He's got a chip on his shoulder Yeah. and, and he's looking at my last fight. So it's like, okay, like if you're going to look at that and that's the guy you think is showing up, like your coaches are doing you a big disservice if you guys aren't looking back further than that. So whatever, it's fun. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's kind of like, I don't know, kind of gritty and kind of talking a little bit. Like that's, it's really, I don't know. It's exciting. Well, I was excited about the fight going into this conversation. Uh, 39th pro fight for you. Five straight main events now. Uh, things are going well. But now I'm even more excited. You have sold me on it. So I'm looking forward to this very much. August 29th, Las Vegas. The return of Anthony Smith against Alexander Rakic. Um, and, and by the way, I just want to say that no one cares about what I think about this. But you're doing such a great job on those broadcasts, man. Really, you're so well-spoken and thoughtful and honest. 
Uh, so I hope that they get to use you more because I really enjoy when they, when they put you on the desk, the post-fight show and all that stuff, pre-fight show, keep it up. And, and the serious show as well is great. So keep it up, Anthony. I'm glad everyone's doing well. And uh, I hope they continue to do well. And, you know, your family is concerned and uh, I'm looking forward to this fight. So good luck to you and the team come August 29th. Thanks a lot, man. And that means a lot to me, the, the, the media part of it. Cause it's, it's really hard. It really is. And you don't make it seem you know, that way. You're very is. comfortable it's, up there. It's, it's so hard. And, you know, I study really well. I think that that's where, that's what kind of saves me a little bit is, is I once, by the time I get there, I know these guys inside and out. And uh, so, but that does mean a lot to me. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.